Hi everyone, Vatya here for RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. And today I'm going to share the experience of installing Magic's Samplitude Music Studio. Samplitude Music Studio is the entry level to Samplitude Pro. So let's install it and find out what we can do with Samplitude Music Studio 2017. I have to mention that I do have Samplitude Music Studio 2015 already installed on my PC and I have used it in the past as one of my DAW to record music before I switched to Studio One from Personas. But let's give it a try of uh, the new Samplitude Music Studio because what I have read it has lots and lots of new things added to it. Actually, let's uh, visit Magix and have a look at um, their product. Samplitude Music Studio. Yes, of course, you recently viewed the products. Samplitude Music Studio. Let's have a look. If you cannot find it on the screen there, we can go to Music and Music Studio. So it has 19 virtual instruments already included from drums, synthesizers, piano, organ, banjo, and many more. Eight virtual drum machines we're going to look at later on. Notation help. Obviously, it does MIDI and everything. Um, something new is using Free Magic Audio Remote app on your iPad or your iPhone. It has multi track recording in 24 bits, 96 kilohertz studio quality which is really great. And it does support VST3 and VST2 interfaces. And it's only $149.99 or $150 Australian dollars. Let's click Learn More. So we can play instruments, we can produce music. There's a lot we can do. Records everything. You can go and have a look and see all the different things that it does. I'm going to try the Concert Grand Piano. We'll try some of the drums included in there. So it's got really great things and easy start things we're going to look at. Oh, well, I'm going to share my experience. I haven't installed the new version yet. Um, so we'll find out all together what it will do. Okay, so I'm installing on my Windows 10 on my main PC. It really looks great. The last version of 2015 that I had, uh, that was one of uh, the main DAWs that I used, and uh, I was very happy with it. I've recorded several tracks on it, um, an album of mine, and lots of clients as well, because it was quite easy to use. So anyway, let's see how easy to install it. I'm just going to select Standard and Accept. Of course we do, blindly, accept the license agreement. If you like to read, you can read it. There we go, I just read it. And we hit continue. Now, it was a very small file that it actually downloaded. So I expected that it's going to be some download. So it start to download about 400 megabytes, which is not much. And I think that's the core uh, software that it will download eventually. But I think once you've downloaded, then you can select all of the different options, all of the different added libraries later on within the program as well. Very similar to Studio One. As Studio One, you know, you can download all of its libraries once you've got the main program installed. I assume this will be similar. So while I wait for my slow connection to download uh, Samplitude Music Studio, uh, I shall uh, come back very soon. Okay, we're nearly there. A few more megabytes and we'll be done. Yay! Preparing for installation. It's really exciting when you see things move up and start happening. I don't know. I get excited. Okay, looks like a few things are being installed and we have some slideshow telling us what we are getting into. Installation successful and there's an icon on my desktop right there. 
and it is a 64-bit, it says. There was no option to select, but I guess that might have automatically selected because my Windows 10 is 64-bit. So let's click the Finish button and let it start Samplitude Music Studio. Okay, here is the bit where I have to hide so that I can put my serial number. So if you have yours, please do enter yours and you can enter your email as well. I guess if you downloaded the trial, you can always continue using trial or you can purchase online if you haven't purchased already. But I'm going to put my number and see how we go. So I'll be back very shortly after I put my numbers in and my correct email address and activate with the serial number. Once I put the correct product key and my correct email address, it came up with the service center. Obviously, it needs to activate it. If you don't have an account with Magic, then you can create one. But I already have one. So I'm just going to log in again with the correct email address and password, and then I'm going to proceed. So I'll be back shortly. So once I was able to log in to the service center, yep, I've selected all of that, and all my details were all correct. So I'm just going to complete the registration. Okay, thank you. The program has been successfully activated. Easy peasy. It was very quick and easy. Now it says, um, as I mentioned, I guess I was right. I was correct to guess. There are additional, additional free downloads available in the Download Instrument Sounds section. Okay, now the screen is actually in the background, but it is because I've got a really wide 21 by 9 uh, ratio wide screen. It's not going to fit all of it in here. Um, so I might have to see if I can minimize it. And No, I can't. Okay, I'm just going to say free add-on package. I can do that later on at the moment. I just want to see... Um, whoops. I just want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to say start. Okay, so we come up with... Unfortunately, I cannot uh, minimize the other screen, but you can see it. So this is a great sort of uh, startup point where you can select what instrument you want to play or where you want to record vocals, guitars, pianos, a band. So it looks very intuitive, like a templates, I guess. Uh, or you can create an empty project. Number of tracks, 16, yep. Magic Remote Inactive. I've got to look at that later on. That looks very interesting. It could be very similar to Studio One professional version that support remote, so you can actually control your DAW with your iPad. So that's a great thing. So, um, oh, that's the first thing probably we need to do. Audio setup. Let's try that because I think that's uh, quite important. Sound card and driver, Azure Magic Low Latency. Okay, maybe not. Ah, oh, there we go. It looks something uh, familiar. That looks like um, Azure for All. Yep, definitely looks like Azure for All, but it looks like rebranded for Magic. So it's like um, it's got very very uh, good comprehensive way to set it up. There's inputs and inputs. MIDI. This is where my MIDI device is going to be connected. A hardware controller, which is it. It could be any one of my surface control. Like I have eye control, which are motorized faders. This is where we can set it all up. Um, recording. What format we want, 16-bit or 24-bit. Uh, Again, playback modes. There's going to be plenty to look at. VST. We've, here we can set up where we want our VSTs to be. Or scan system VST folders. Maybe we can do that. We can also activate rewire, which is really great. Because if we have VST either effects or instruments that use rewire, 
we can activate that. I didn't think it actually supported it, which is really good. Well, it looks like after I clicked OK, right at the bottom of the screen, uh, where you cannot see, but I can, it's actually scanning my VST plugin folder and loading up all the VSTs I already have. Wow, that's really great. And it comes up saying that, yep, um, it's found all of my VST plugins, which is great. And it keeps doing it in the background. So let's just create an empty project. An empty project. Now I can minimize and be able to fit onto my screen. This is really great. There we go. That's Magic's Samplitude Music Studio. It may look complicated, but a lot of these things, I know, you can take them off. Very, very quickly, you have your timeline and tracks right at the top here. And the tracks are on, on your left-hand side. And all your clips and objects will be in your timeline. At the bottom is our transport and level. Really great leveling. And this here is like our browser, where we can browse sound pools, or we can have time display. An object editor, so if we were selecting an object on our timeline, all of its parameters would be displayed here. We can search our normal file on our Windows filing system. Uh, we can look for objects, which are in our project. These are all the different tracks. At the moment, there's nothing there. There's 16 of them. So you can select from here as well. These are all our takes. Obviously, we don't have any at the moment. Markers, visualization. At the moment, it's the really large level display. Then it's our MIDI editor. If we had an object selected, we'd be able to edit MIDI. This is our VSDIs at the moment. None of them, obviously, we don't have anything added. And a keyboard, which is, you know, musical keyboard. Also has indication here what keys we can use on our computer keyboard to play the notes. Um, I really like this thing here. I've seen it in Music Maker as well. This is the arpeggiator. We can turn it on and you just have to hold a chord and it arpeggiates. We'll look at that in future videos. So basically that's it. It's all there. So if we want to arm a track, that's our inputs. And you can arm for recording, for listening. I might just move that a little bit this way so we can actually see it there. So delay and reverb. So we can select all of them, so all the magic plugins. But here are all my ones already automatically detected it. And it's already in here. And that's a rewire setup. And more effects. Demo of some other things. Yeah, so it's it's really, really intuitive and really great. That's our solo, mute, and I and we have our menus at the top as well. Well, I'm really, really impressed. That installation and running it was very, very uh, quick and easy. No hassles. So in my next video, and this is the, my plan, that I will be recording my next song in Magic Samplitude Music Studio. I'm going to use as many built-in VSTi instruments to uh, arrange my song. And then I'm going to record multiple instruments in there as well to so see what I can record, like vocals, and hopefully uh, some electric guitar, maybe. Um, and I'm going to try to have some of the built-in plugins to see how well they work and then use some of my personal plugins that I like to use in them to see how quickly and easily I'll be able to record a song. I hope this was helpful. Now you know how quickly it is to install and run Samplitude Music Studio. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.